Hello and welcome back to LDT 3135, Practical Project Management. I'm Dr. Tim Boylo, and in this module, our focus is on managing project quality. A related topic to this is managing project risk, which we will discuss in the next module. Project quality management includes processes for incorporating the organization's quality policy related to planning, managing, and controlling project and product quality requirements in order to meet stakeholders' requirements. So let's get started. Here's our agenda for this module. This is a relatively short unit, and in it we will cover quality planning, quality planning tools, quality management standards, trends and practices in quality management, and we'll wrap up with next steps. So we begin with a definition of quality. Quality can be defined as the standard of something, as measured against other things of a similar kind, the degree of excellence of something, in other words. So how do we manage quality? Quality is managed on a project by setting goals and taking measurements. This requires an understanding of the quality levels that stakeholders consider to be acceptable and ensuring that the project meets those standards. In a sense, managing quality is no different than managing budget and schedule goals. Ultimately, it comes down to meeting stakeholder expectations. This brings us to the concept of quality and grade. ISO defines quality as, a, as the degree to which a set of inherent characteristics fulfill requirements. The set of requirements for a product or process can be given a grade to provide a basis for comparison. We see the concept of grade applied to diamonds in terms of cut, color, and clarity. We also see it applied to eggs when we think of small, medium, large, or extra large as different grades. Gasoline grade is expressed in octane, such as 87, 89, 91, or 93, or using other definitions of grade, such as regular, plus, premium, or super. Using the example of gasoline, it is possible to have a high grade, such as premium, or 91 octane, yet be a poor quality in terms of the amount of water or dirt mixed in. And we use statistical analysis to determine purity in, as a, an attribute of quality. Watt provides several tools to aid in planning and controlling the quality of a project. The first is cost-benefit analysis. This provides a ratio of the cost of quality activities in terms of effort and resources against project benefits, such as less rework, higher productivity and efficiency, and customer satisfaction. Benchmarking relies on the use of results from other similar types of projects to set quality goals. Benchmarks provide a reference point for judging a product before the work begins. Design of experiments refers to a list of the kinds of tests that may be run on the, on the product, such as usability, verification of hyperlinks, and portability to different platforms or languages, all linked to stakeholder expectations. Cost of quality refers to the sum of costs for all prevention and inspection activities to ensure quality on the project. And finally, quality assurance is the process of continuous quality improvement to create confidence in the quality plan by reviewing quality metrics with each product increment throughout the product implementation stages. So according to PMBOK, project quality management includes the processes for incorporating the organization's quality policy regarding planning, managing, and controlling project and product quality requirements in order to meet stakeholders' objectives. Project quality management also supports continuous process improvement activities undertaken on behalf of the performing organization. There are three processes associated with the PMI standard for project quality management. The first 
is plan quality management, which is the process of identifying quality requirements and or standards for the project and its deliverables, and then documenting how the project would demonstrate compliance with quality requirements and standards that are set by the organization. Next is manage quality, which is the process of translating the quality management plan into executable quality activities that incorporate the organization's quality policies into the project. And finally is control quality. This is the process of monitoring and recording the results of executing the quality management activities to assess performance and ensure the project outputs are complete, correct, and meet stakeholder expectations. So quality management is central to agile and adaptive product development environments. In order to navigate change, agile methods call for frequent product and project quality review steps within each sprint, rather than waiting until the end of the project. Sprint retrospectives provide a regular check on the effectiveness of the quality processes by looking for the root cause of product issues with each increment, and then incorporating new approaches to improve quality. The use of the sprint backlog as a prioritized subset of the product backlog aids in identifying quality issues earlier in the project life cycle while the overall costs of change are lower. Best practices in quality management include approaches to minimize variation and deliver results that meet defined stakeholder requirements. Trends in project quality management include but are not limited to customer satisfaction. Cust customer satisfaction is a responsibility of the project teams and that they have to understand, evaluate, define, and manage requirements so that stakeholder expectations are met. In agile environments, stakeholder engagement with the teams ensures customer satisfaction is maintained throughout the project. Continual improvement using plan, do, check, act. The PDCA cycle is the basis for quality improvement as defined by Short and modified by Deming. Additional quality improvement initiatives include Total Quality Management, or TQM, Six Sigma, and Lean Six Sigma. All provide continuous improvement of the project management process, as well as the quality of the end product, service, or result. Stakeholder responsibility. Simply stated, the success of the project requires the participation of all members of the project team, including the project stakeholders. And then finally, is mutually beneficial partnerships with suppliers. As we discussed in the last module, in agile environments, suppliers or consultants may be used to extend the team. Relationships that are based on trusted collaboration and cooperation enhance the ability of the organization and suppliers to create value for each other. It also helps to distribute risk and optimizes costs and resources while ensuring quality standards are met. In agile environments, the project team, stakeholders, and suppliers have a shared responsibility for ensuring quality standards are met. As we've seen in other PMBOK knowledge areas, this collaborative working relationship is based on having a common vision for success, where all parties share in the risk as well as the rewards associated with the project. We conclude this presentation with next steps. Be sure to work through all parts of the course materials for Module 11, including all content, activities, and assignments. And as was the case in the last, the only assignment for this module is the next sprint as you continue working on an ebook product. Looking ahead, be sure to complete all associated readings in the course schedule as you prepare for Module 12. Well, that brings us to the end of this presentation. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. Until next time, this is Dr. Tim Boileau, wishing each of you a pleasant learning experience, and I'll see you online.